Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to something completely different. This project is another remake of a previous project that I'd done quite a few years ago, a capacitance leakage tester. And I've been wanting to remake this onto a PC board for a long time. Finally got to do it. I needed some inspiration. The inspiration I got was the mess up I did with that uh, Grundig. Just did not feel like starting that right now before Christmas. So I decided to go into something I enjoyed a bit more. I ordered the boards, boards arrived. And guess what? It's a prototype. There's some mistakes on the boards, so you won't be able to get copies of the Gerbers right now because at the end of the video, I'll explain what I've done. I'm going to order new ones and then I'll share the, uh, the project with you. But for now, this is the build in a prototype stage, a stage that I really enjoy because I want to build a version of that capacitance leakage tester that goes on my shelf over there. Okay, a lot smaller. This is a lot smaller than the device that I designed and built quite a few years ago. And I've got, uh, put links in the video to, to the actual, um, to the actual des um, development of that project in the previous incarnation. So you can go and look at that. But for now, let's get going. Let's see how this thing works out. Hope you enjoy the video. What do these things have in common? What the hell is one of these doing here on top of a rather tired looking device, which I designed and built myself and which looks a little bit worse for wear. A Chinese, very, very cheap high voltage uh, converter. This takes about uh, 12 volts and goes up as high as, well, they say about 400 volts. I think it actually goes higher. And of course, a box from PCBWay. Well, the fact is Christmas came early for me. After my rather disappointing experience with that bugger over there, I was very, very happy to receive the box from PCBWay with my latest boards for my next project. And here's the board. Electronics Old and New Capacitance Leakage Tester version 2.0-12-2022. Well, this is a remake. In all the great movies, they have remakes, different actors, different lighting, <laughs> different setting, different budget. This is one of those. And uh, I've got to thank PCBWay for their sponsorship of this video and their support with the boards. But let me tell you what I'm going to do with this. A few years ago, I decided to design and build this little guy. It's a capacitance leakage tester. It has been incredibly useful. I have used this, well, you could probably tell. Look at it. It's even lost one of its sides. But I built this or designed and built this to test leakage on capacitors. Leaking as in leaking DC, not leaking gunge, although some of them do that as well. And I'll link you to the video series. This is one of the most watched videos that I've ever made. It basically produces a varying voltage from zero, not quite zero, I think this went from about 30 volts to 330, if I'm not mistaken. And I can connect a capacitor across here, a uh, foil cap or even electrolytic, and I can switch on and test for leakage. And this gives me leakage in various ranges. As you can see, the first range is 100 milliamps, the second range 10 milliamps, 1 milliamp, and 0.1 milliamp. That's 100 microamps, which is the full scale deflection of this meter with no shunt to it. Now, in the video that I do, the video series that I do, I go into a lot of detail on designing this thing. And I've had an enormous amount of comments and suggestions in the past about how to improve it. The fact is that I had no reason to improve it because I was using this all the time and it works perfectly well. What I would do is I'd put a capacitor on here, I'd start at low voltage, and then I would switch it on. That switches on and puts it in the highest range so that if there's a dead short, this thing doesn't blast itself off the scale. And then depending on what I get, normally on 100 milliamps, I wouldn't get any reading. I'd go to the 10 milliamp range, get a small reading maybe, one milliamp, and if it's even lower than that, I can go to the 100 microamp scale. I could leave it for some time to see whether it reforms in the case of a electrolytic. The point is that this thing would allow me to increase the voltage and I can test whatever voltage I want up to the maximum of, as I said, 330 volts. What I decided to do is to improve it and create a board for it. Now, this is only possible because PCBWay is sponsoring me and I can get these boards made exactly the way I want them. And what I've decided to do is to add a few changes to this. And I'll explain that when I show you the schematic. What I'm basically going to do is I'm going to use some things from this 
and I've got a few new functions or a new characteristics that I want to try out on here. What this thing will do is it'll take, it'll take an AC output from a transformer that's producing about 220 volts. So basically an isolation transformer. In the original version, I used a little uh, toroid that I'd bought for a preamp because I don't need much current. Remember, we're trying to measure leakage in capacitors. If this thing measures many milliamps, throw the cap away. You don't want this. This is not just a power supply. This thing actually went as high as 12 milliamps. I had a limiting resistor in there. I've now changed the concept in this. This thing will uh, have a, it's got a feedback system that shuts off the MOSFET uh, when it uh, exceeds a certain amount of current. A very similar circuit to the one I used in the uh, tube tester power supply. And I want to see if I can make this look a lot better. And what I want to do especially is I want to build it on this. Now, the reason I want to build it on this, if you haven't seen it, for quite some time, I got into a habit of building test gear that fits in a little bracket, a little rail that I have underneath this shelf. And, uh, you know, I've got an audio dummy load, a workshop amp, a receiver that receives Bluetooth and Wi-Fi so that I can have an audio source, a Pi attenuator for the uh, signals coming out of the signal generator. And I've used this particular type of aluminum enclosure cut a particular way so that I can just fit it in there. I've used this on all those projects because I like the fact that this becomes all very accessible. It's right there. It's not in the way. This is high enough. And I wanted to build this uh, capacitance leakage tester so that it takes pride of place over there. Just another one module that goes on here. And therefore, I had to do it in a slightly different form factor. This would definitely not fit on there. And also, I like things to be uniform. So I redesigned everything to fit on here, and I'm going to use a few tricks. I'm not using the uh, transformer that I mentioned, the uh, toroidal transformer. I'm actually using a little module, and I've got one in there. I've been testing it so far. It works perfectly. But it's this module over here. And this is a DC to DC converter. It takes in 12 volts up to, I think it's up to 30 volts, actually. But I normally would use 12 volts from a power supply, whether it's a wall wart or my bench supply. And you can produce up to 400 volts out by adjusting it here. Now, I'm going to set it to a fixed output voltage of about 300 or 400 volts. Let's call it 330. Let's keep it the same. 330 volts uh, with a fixed trimmer in here, which is what was in here in the first place. This will be my high voltage DC source. I designed the boards so you can use one of two methods. You either use a uh, transformer and you get AC out, or you use something like this where you've already got DC. Obviously, the DC coming out of here will not go through the diodes necessarily. You don't even have to populate that. It'll go straight to the DC input, high voltage DC input over here, which bypasses all this. This will stay unpopulated and it'll go straight to that end. Now, what we have then is a MOSFET adjustable voltage regulator, which we can adjust with a pot, uh, similar to the one that I have in the original design. Now, this thing will fit in the back here. Okay, so that's the idea. It fits in the back here. Actually, it's the other way around. It fits like that. So I will have the range switch, the pot here. I'll have the uh, outputs for the actual device under test. What else will I have here? I'll have a voltmeter. I'm going to use a digital voltmeter as opposed to the moving coil one here, but I will be using the original micrometer. I like this one. I like the look. I like the effect. It served me well so far. It's going to stay in, in place, but that's going to be probably there. And then a digital voltmeter there. There's also another selector switch that goes on here, which is here on the board. It's a double pole, double throw switch, which allows me to adjust the range of the output voltage. I'll have a lower range and a higher range. If I make uh, this thing a voltage divider, I can make the range go from, if I've got it on low, I can say, go from zero to two thirds of the voltage. Okay, like if I'm working on 330 volts, I can go from zero to 220. And then if I click to the upper range, I can go from 110 to 330. You'll understand it when I show you in the schematic. But that's the idea. I wanted to keep this as simple as possible, yet I wanted to incorporate some of the things I felt this thing could do with, like um, limiting current function so that you don't have to have that resistor in line. Uh, you'll understand it, as I said, when I show you the, uh, the schematic. But the point is, it'll 
take 12 volts and produce the voltage I need for the caps. Now remember, this thing uses high voltage. This thing produces high voltage. So whenever you're testing or playing with these things, you're doing so to your own risk, be careful. High voltage can do some serious damage to your health. It's tried a few times with me. I've been lucky, but um, yeah, high voltage stuff, beware. What I'm going to do is I'm going to populate this board with um, the components I believe I need. I'm not going to do the rectifier, as I said, because I'm using DC voltage. I want to feed in 330 volts and see if it re regulates properly, if it controls the output properly. And we'll see and take it from there. And I'll also go through the whole schematic and all the changes that I've made so that you get an idea of what I've done. At the end of this, provided this thing works well, I'll make these boards freely available on the share section of the PCBWay website. So if you choose, you can uh, download the Gerbers or just order the boards directly from there yourself. Let me carry on. Here is the current final schematic. <laughs> I'll say that with some trepidation because it might still change. But this is the schematic for the entire system. And I'm going to try and describe this in about five minutes because a full, really detailed description is given in the previous series. So if you really want to get into it, go and look at that. Here we have the power supply section itself. We've got an input for AC volts coming from our little transformer, if we use the transformer, producing in excess of 200, 250 volts AC. Comes in here, bridge uh, rectifier, full bridge rectifier. So we get about 320, 330 volts over here, DC. That then just goes through a filter network, small resistor, 100 ohm, and a filter capacitor. Doesn't have to be too big, but it does have to be fairly high voltage because this is what we're going to see over here. We don't need uh, much in terms of capacitance because this thing shouldn't draw much current at all. In fact, if our capacitor is good, it shouldn't draw any, uh, any current at all, but it will. So we'll give it a little, little bit of filtering. This uh, resistor here is just to bleed that voltage to ground when we switch it off. So this thing doesn't remain charged. Why do we have this guy over here? Well, as I mentioned, I'm going to use one of those little uh, DC to DC converters that takes in 12 volts, produces up to 400 volts. Let's say we're going to produce 330 volts for argument's sake. I'll set it to 330 and uh, feed it right in here. That ground goes to common ground. The positive goes to here, which is where the positive B plus would come if it had gone through the diodes if I'd used AC. So we've got plus 330 volts here. Same story. We don't even need to put the filter cap in this case because this thing is already filtered. I'll probably put it in anyway. And over here we'll have Let's call it 330 volts DC at this point. Now what happens? It meets this network because this is where I'm going to adjust the voltage that I want to feed the gate of the, uh, the MOSFET. Now why do I have all this switching here? Well, I've got this divided into almost three equal parts. 220K, 250K pot, and another 220K. If these were equal, let's call them equal for now, we'd have one third of that voltage, 110 volts, Two thirds over here, 220, and then the 330 at the top. Now, what I've done with the switch is I can short this one or that one out. If I short this resistor out here with the switch, in other words, if I push it up, then what happens is my 330 volts come straight to here. And then I've got 330 volts there, and I've got this basically divided in two. So 220K, 250K, we'll have about half the voltage here which means that I can adjust it from about, what is it, 165 volts to 330 volts. So that's my limit, lower limit will be 165, the top limit will be the B+. If I switch it the other way, in other words, if I short this one out by putting the switch down, then I've got 330 over here, zero over here, because this is shorted, and then I can adjust from zero to 100, what is it, 165, half of 330? and I can do a lower level test. And this just allows me to expand the range without putting the full 330 volts across this pot, which I don't want to do because these pots don't really like very, very high voltages. Okay, so we've got a variable voltage going in here through 100K uh, gate stopper. This is just to prevent oscillations. It meets the gate. Very little current flows in here because the MOSFET is a voltage control device. So whatever voltage I got here, I'm going to get here minus about four volts. I think that's the uh, the full uh, the turn on voltage of the of the MOSFET. So if I've got a call it 100 volts over here, I'm going to have 96 over here, and the full 330s over here. That's why this has got to be a fairly high voltage device, 
because if I put this on zero down at the bottom, I'll have zero volts, but I've got 330 over here. So this thing's got to be able to withstand that. This is not going to see much current, but it will see quite a high voltage, practically the entire B plus that I have coming in here. This is to prevent the difference in the voltage between the gate and the source to exceed 12 volts so it doesn't uh, achieve breakdown. And then the, the uh, selected voltage comes out here and it goes through a 22 ohm resistor to become our B plus, our high voltage supply. What is this over here? Well, when the, vol when the current flows through here, it creates a voltage drop. If that current is too high because the capacitor shorted, for example, if this exceeds about 0.5 volts, this transistor starts conducting. And if this transistor starts conducting, it draws down, it pulls down the gate voltage. And that means the B plus comes down. So this is a current limit setting, which you use the transistor for. The amount of current that you want to allow before it starts pulling it down will depend on the, on the value of this resistor. If you put 10 ohms, you'll need a hell of a lot of current before this thing starts shutting it off. I want very little current, probably about 20 milliamps, 10 milliamps max, really. So I put a 22 ohm. I can always adjust that if I want, make it higher or lower, but that's what I'm settling for now. Okay, so now we've got a, an adjustable voltage from zero to B plus, depending on where you switch this, and it is current limited with this resistor and it appears here. What do we do next? Well, next it comes into this point and I've got this resistor here, which I had before, which was an absolute current limit. I don't really need it. So if I don't want to use that, if my current limiting on the top section works well, I can just put a jump on here. So ignore this resistor for now. Very little current's coming through, so very small voltage drop anyway, but ignore it for now. And this is where I measure my voltage. This is the voltage that is going to appear across my device under test down here. And my device under test obviously is my capacitor. Okay, so that's the voltage that's going to appear and it'll rise or drop depending on my setting with that potentiometer. Now that goes to here and it's going to go effectively, all this is, is it's going in here through a 100 micrometer out here through a diode to my device under test. That's all it is. Everything else has got to do with a current shunt, with a shunt network to allow my 100 micrometer to measure different ranges. And we'll see exactly how that works. First of all, I put these two back-to-back -back diodes to protect this 100 micrometer, which is very sensitive. It can't see much voltage across it, or it'll just peg and break. So these two diodes prevent the voltage across it from ever exceeding 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 volts. I do know from my previous uh, description that at full scale on this meter, the maximum voltage across here is 0 0.216, 0 0.2 volts. So it should never exceed it. this. The voltage here should never reach 0 0.6. It should never exceed 0 0.2. So these things will never conduct unless there's a fault condition. So we've explained these guys. So what we've got now is a line coming in here, current coming through here, through the micrometer to this point. What are these guys? Well, let's look at the switch. This is a dual pole five position switch. In this position, down here, we've got our B+. It's actually acting just as a shunt in parallel with that meter. But in this position, what we've got is it comes to here, it goes through there, and a very low resistance path. That means that whatever current's coming out here, the majority of it will flow through this section here rather than through the 100 micrometer. And that is a situation where you set the, this resistance value. This is one resistor. I've just got a, res a fixed resistor with a trimmer to be able to adjust it to a very precise point when I calibrate this meter. But what it means is if I put up to 100 milliamps across here, if I'm drawing 100 milliamps through here, then this thing will allow most of the current through. It'll actually allow up to 99.9 .9 milliamps and it'll allow the 0.1 milliamps to go through there to give me a full scale deflection. If I switch up, this is in the discharge position. If I switch up, same thing happens. We'll see what happens with the switch in a minute. The 100 milliamp range is selected. If I switch up one more, the 10 milliamp range is selected. And that just means a different shunt resistor. If I switch up again, 
a one milliamp uh, maximum range is, is selected. And then on the top range, we've got nothing as a shunt because it's a 100 microamp range and that's what this is set for. So our current's flowing through the meter and the shunt network coming to here. And it's basically a voltage with the ability to supply some current. Not much current, but some current. And the reason we've got this here is if you switch off the whole system here, that goes down boom, to zero, our capacitor is still charged or could be still charged. We don't want the current to flow back and destroy this whole system. That's why we've got this diode in this position. It then comes here, the current is here, the voltage and current is here. And on the bottom position, which we had here, we call it discharge. This switch is also in the bottom position. We see that our capacitor will be here connected to ground and to this point. So this point is actually connected through a 47K resistor to ground. So our capacitor is basically shorted to ground. If there was any charge on there, it gets shorted to ground. When we click to the first position, which is the 100 milliamp range, that's what we're setting it for. If this thing is a dead short, it, it'll allow quite a bit of current to go through up to 100 milliamps. Of course, it won't because our current limit at the top there will, will limit that. But it's set so that we can check if there's an absolute short, if lots of current is flowing through. And sometimes you do see a blip. When you switch this to that position, you do see a little spike on the current because if you have a big electrolytic capacitor here, it will take quite a bit of charge current. So that's fine. It doesn't damage your circuit. So 100 milliamps is over here. The same with all these. Whenever you switch it off the discharge point, when you click it clockwise, it starts being able to receive current to the capacitor. And the whole idea is that you click it to the 100 milliamp. If you don't see any deflection there, you can click it to the 10 milliamp. If you still don't see much deflection there, you click it to the 1 milliamp range. And sometimes you start seeing some current, and if it's more than one-tenth of the scale, you don't even go to the top one, which is the 100 microamp. But if it's not one-tenth of the scale, you can go to 100 microamp, and you can see precisely what your leakage current is. That is our full schematic, and it's, it's very simple. I say that this is uh, still a prototype, and it is. I've mentioned this before. It's a prototype until it's not, and usually it can still become one. So let me uh, show you the result of that build, and... Um, We'll see if this needs any changing. And here's our board. And I've got to admit, some mistakes were made. Let's have a quick look at this. I've got these three components on the upper side. I call this the uh, the upper side, the other one the lower side, it doesn't matter. But I've got a switch here, the higher voltage level, lower voltage level switch. I've got the pot, which is to adjust the voltage range. And I've got the uh, bands or the range selector switch for the ammeter or microammeter. What I did wrong is because I, putting, I was putting these on the upper side, the footprints were reversed. Bloody stupid, I know. This comes out okay because it doesn't matter. It's the same on the one way, uh, one side as, as it is the other. But this one, if you look at this, your pot is normally your zero, one, two. In other words, this is the bottom end, this is the top end, and that's the wiper. Because this was done on the reverse side, I put this, I got this the wrong way around. So what I had here was the ground, the or the lower end, the wiper, and the top end. So I had to do some flipping around, which is not the idea. So obviously a new board is going to be made, but this one was good enough for me to, to, uh, to get working and to try everything out on. The other mistake, the more important mistake, was on the switch. This was definitely exactly mirror imaged. So I had to play around with it. And as you can see, that middle one there had to come to here. And it was literally a mirror image. So on the new board, I've corrected that. I've also made the new board slightly smaller. So uh, what I'm trying to say is this board works. This is what I'm going to show you. And I'm going to order new boards. And when those boards arrive, I'll do a rebuild of this section, finish the actual device, put it in the case, and, um, and then share those boards with you. But this thing's working perfectly well. And what I've done is I've got my uh, high voltage DC coming in. I'll show you where that comes from in a second. I've got my, uh, I've actually put a 10 microfarad capacitor here. I don't think I had to because this DC is coming in filtered anyway. But I'll put it in anyway. So the only difference here is there's no diodes. If I was going to use um, a transformer and I'd get AC voltage here, 
out of the diodes in there to rectify it, and I would not use this. Then what I've got is these little um, pin thingies to connect the various uh, devices. One of them is the voltmeter, the microammeter, and also the device under test, which is the uh, banana sockets for the capacitor itself. What else have I got? I've got these guys here also flying in the air. And the reason is these guys, because of the fact that the pot is on the underside and these things are actually very close to the pot, I've got a space on the spot. Actually, it's one of those feet that you stick on one side to put under your devices. And the reason for this is to keep it away from there because this is lower than that and I need the same height, but also to avoid any possibility of a short on that end. On the new board, it's actually closer down. So the idea is that when you solder these guys, you literally solder them on the top um, pad without letting it really go through. But they are going to be uh, transferred to the new board and that comes in anyway. And what I'm going to do now is show you how I've planned this on my, on my portable faceplate or my temporary faceplate. And then we'll test it. I'll show you how this thing works. It works pretty well. Now, what I've got here is my usual system where I use a temporary faceplate. It's a fiber board. It's easy to cut, easy to cut, and easy to change and write on and all that sort of stuff. And that helps me to, to determine where I'm going to place everything. Let me show you. This is exactly the same width as my final enclosure. And of course, it's higher because I need space down here. The stuff I've got down here is probably what will be at the back. And also, I need a way to keep this vertical. So what I have here is the ammeter, the microammeter, which I removed from the, the other, from the old unit. I've got these new um, banana sockets. I've got the holes made for that to come through. And let's look at the back. The back, I've got the high voltage unit at the bottom with a 12 volt DC coming in. This will be in the back part of that enclosure. This will be at the back of the enclosure itself. And then I've got the um, microammeter with the plug. And I've got the device under test of the plug. I still have not got the voltmeter because the voltmeter is going to go in here. You'll see it from the front. It'll be a, a little digital LED device. It's still on its way. The one I ordered goes up to 500 volts, but I can use my multimeter to test in the meantime. So what I'm going to do is put this whole thing in here and we'll start testing. So here we are. It's done. Now let me set up the supply section, the actual high voltage supply, and then we can test the actual device. I have my supply from my bench power supply coming in. I'm going to plug it in here. The supply is set to 12 volts coming in here, which is what they tell you you should supply it with. You can do go up to 30, but 12 volts seems fine. And if I, I then want to replace this with a wall wart, it seems to be pretty easy. I can go down to nine, I can do 12, I can do 18. Let's leave it at 12 for now and I'll be able to see what the actual current draw is on, on the power supply itself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this for about 100 volts. I'm not going to go all the way to 300 right now. I, I'm very fearful of these guys. These, these guys are far too cheap for my liking. Not that I don't like a bargain, but you know, something producing up to 800 volts, they say. If you go across the negative and positive here, 800 volts costing about four bucks. Mm, I get a bit suspicious. But anyway, I'm going to test everything with 100 volts as a reference, and then we'll, uh, we'll be able to escalate from there. So I've got this set up. I'm not going to touch anything here because it does give us high voltages. We've got the meter there. All I need to do is adjust this trimmer here to get the adjustable voltage over here. I could use this as the actual adjustable voltage, but again, high voltage across a pot without any other protection on something like this. I'm not too happy with that. That's why I use the whole um, MOSFET adjustable uh, controller thing. Okay, let me put on the supply, 12 volts, and we've got 102. As you can tell, I've been playing with this, but I can go up. 
or down, up. Let's leave it there. 100 volts. Okay, I then I'm going to connect that 100 volts to the input here, the high volts DC input, and we are, we'll be able to see what comes out the other end. Done. We've got the 100 volts coming into the high volts DC in here. This thing is off at the moment. So now I can put this on that temporary stand, which is nothing more than a clamp. I should get a bit fancier than this, but it works. Make sure nothing's touching on the back, and it isn't, and we're good to go. We've got our um, unit over here. Now, what am I going to test for? I'm going to test first for voltage. Let me, and because we don't have our little voltmeter on here, we, we have to use an improvisation, which is put this voltmeter here, and I'm going to connect it in the interior where I know my B plus is coming out before it goes through the meter. I don't want it to go through the meter just yet. So I'm connecting it to those clips that are my output that go to the voltmeter. So imagine that that is our voltmeter over there. No current will go through there because I'm leaving this on the off position. Anyway, let me switch it on. Here we go, it's on. Now it's on the lower range and this is pretty much near zero. It gets pretty close to zero. Now remember, this thing is got no load, which is sometimes a bit of a problem for the actual voltage. You need a bit of a load, but it's got no load. But here we go. On the lower range, we should get it to about halfway. Just above halfway. So 51 volts. Now, if I want to do the upper range, I just flick that and it starts about halfway, 41, and it's going all the way to 90, 95.7. The three point, uh, that, that difference of 4.3 volts is the uh, drop across the, the actual MOSFET. It does have a voltage drop from the gate to the, to the uh, source. That's why you get that. Now, that means we've got an adjustable voltage, a lower range and a higher range. There's only one thing I don't like about this, and that is that if you're in the higher range and you go down, that's fine. But if you are in the lower range, like that, and you go to the top and you say, okay, now I want to go higher. When you flick it, it shoots all the way to 100. That could be a problem. What you need to do is if you're on the end of the lower range, you should bring it down, then flick it, and then go up. Not perfect. This is not perfect but I don't want to get more complicated than it is, so I'm leaving it like that. The next thing I want to do is I want to check what happens when I draw more current than the um, circuit is designed for. Remember, I've got that little 22 ohm resistor, which is uh, going to bias that uh, current limit transistor. Now, the way I'm going to do that is, again, probably not the easiest, not the, uh, the safest way, but I'm going to do it anyway. Let me set it up for you and show you what, what I mean. Let's have a look at this uh, precarious setup. I've got this me measuring the volts. It's very low at the moment. You'll see why. I've got this pot over here. It's a pretty robust pot. It's about a two watt pot acting as adjustable load. It's on maximum now. I think it's a 1K. The uh, positive comes out here through the ammeter and back to the pot, back to ground. So we can measure the current going through there and uh, we'll be able to determine what happens to the current, how much does it go up, and what happens to the voltage. I've got this off at the moment, but now if I put it onto the 100 milliamp range, which is the highest range, we see some current start going through there. Let me just shorten this. We don't need that much precision. Now I can start going up in voltage. I want to see what happens, what the maximum current is going to be on here. I'm putting up the voltage. And the maximum I can get on the low range is five milliamps. Let me go to the upper range. I think we'll need the upper range to get some higher currents. Flick it. We've got 10 milliamps on here. Now, if I want to get more current and I want to see what happens if we we get an excessive current draw, is I can reduce this. So 
13 milliamps. Now look at the voltage, it's still there. 15, 18, and it's starting to be affected. That transistor is turning on. See that? It comes down and the, the current stays at about or under 30 milliamps. See that? I'm putting it basically shorted. I'm basically shorting the output and I've got 30 milliamps max. So that's working okay. Let me go back up. I don't want that much current through the spot. I don't know how good it is. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to calibrate this meter. Now what I do is I put in a known current through here or through the system and I can check what it gives me here and I can see what I get on there. Now I've already calibrated but all it means is you adjust those little trimmers at the back. So let's see, this one's already calibrated. Let's see what happens if I give it a bit more current. Let's say I give it 20 milliamps. I'm going up to about 20 on there. 21. Eh. It's not bad and I'm never going to get much current like that anyway. If I go down, let's go down to 5 milliamps. And do that by reducing the voltage or increasing the, the pot. This is at max, so this is warm. <laughs> so I'm going to go to about 5 milliamps. Remember, these currents are absolutely unrealistic. You should not get currents like this at all. You should be getting microamps. Okay, points, uh, 6 milliamps. Now let's take this to the 10 milliamp range. And it's at 6 milliamps. Pretty close. On the final, I'll do it closer, but so far, so good. Now let's go down to 0.6 milliamps, for example. Can I get down that far? No, I'll have to drop the voltage range. I want 0.6 milliamps so I can measure the 1 milliamp range. Oh, too far. Okay, 0.62. Let's go to the 1 milliamp range. It's not well calibrated. So it's 0.57. It's a little bit off, so I can go back here. And adjust that trimmer one way or the other. I'm not sure which way. What do I want? 0.5. It's 0.52. Actually, it's, it's on. This thing was taking time to adjust just over 0.5. No, it's right. It's correct. 0.5 milliamps and it's just over 0.5. Now, I could go lower to the microamp range. Can I get there? I mean, it's starting to get very, very sensitive. It's 196 milliamp, milli uh, microamps. That'll still peg the meter. Need to get it to what is that? Okay, let's try that. Under microamp range, 55. Eh, it's a little bit low here, but I can't do anything about the um, accuracy there. I'm not sure if this is as accurate as I think it should be, but the result is we've got this thing working, and um, I've been able to calibrate it. Now, how would I test a leak, uh, a leakage, a leaky capacitor? Can I test it with it as it is? And the fact is I can. I've got this guy here. This is really leaky, okay? Now I'm going to take all this out. I'm just going to leave the voltmeter. I don't need the ammeter. I'll set it up and show you this thing in action. So here we go. We're going to test a capacitor that's suspect, and this one certainly is. Look at it. Just put that across there. There's no polarity on these things. So we're safe just to clip it. Be careful when you clip it. And when you have these clips on here, whatever voltage this uh, this device is putting out is across there. So you've got to be careful you don't touch it. The position it's in at the moment is in the off position. And that means that this thing is shorting to ground via that 47K resistor. And that's what happens when you click down. When it comes to the end, it clicks down and it shorts it to ground. So it discharges the capacitor. So this capacitor is in line here. And we're going to test it. So we would plop, flick the uh, power switch, which I'm going to do now on the power supply and this thing is at the low end of the range. Let me put this on the side so we can see it better. And now what we do is we put it on the 100 milliamp scale. 
the highest scale. Okay. And we can start upping the voltage. And you look at that to see if anything happens. Is there any movement? Now, I want to test this, let's say, at 75 volts, okay? Because I don't have the, uh, the DC supply set for 330. This thing would go all the way to the top level. This is a 500 volt, I think it is, capacitor. I'm not sure, actually. It's, oh no, it's 260 volts. Man, you've got to look at those things because they can explode. So I'm upping this and I'm getting nothing there. I can actually now go onto the 10 milliamp range and I start seeing something there. That's not good. I'm seeing something there, but this thing is nowhere near the top of the scale. I can keep going. Can you see that? It's just going up and up and up and up and up. Okay, that obviously is leaking badly, but let me test it on the higher range. Go all the way to 100. 94 volts, and this thing is leaking like a sieve. I can't even put this on the, what is that? Is that the 10 milliamp range? Yeah, that's a 10 milliamp range. I'd, I'd gone up twice. Okay. 10 milliamp range, it's leaking 1.6 milliamp, 1.8 milliamps. There is no way that I can um, put it on the 1 milliamp range. I know this thing is, is really, really bad. Let's say, for example, I take this down. And let's say we are there at the top of the range. I can then go to the 1 milliamp range and figure out that it's leaking, you know, 0.65. Okay. But this particular case, we know it's leaking badly because it's on the 10 milliamp range and a capacitor that's leaking almost 2 milliamps is a resistor. It's really poor. That's where we are right now. So my plan is this. I'm going to finish this video now. As far as I'm concerned, the prototyping is finished. It's done. I've tested the short circuit protection or the uh, current limiting. I've checked the uh, calibration of the meter. I can do that. Those resistor values and trimmer values are fine. The little device provides my voltage, my DC. I don't have to go into to all the trouble of getting a uh, rather expensive transformer in here. The other one was pretty expensive. It's a toroidal for a high quality preamp. So this thing is perfectly fine. The smoothing is perfectly fine. We don't need a very clean DC. We just want to see if current passes. And this thing looks like it's going to fit right up there. What I had to do is I had to cut off the, the back of these guys so they don't touch the board. I forgot to show you that, but again, I'll show you that in the final build. And I've made the corrections to the board. The board is slightly smaller. This is the board I've got here. The board that I've got now is corrected that, corrected that, made this a little bit smaller so that I think I may be even, even be able to um, miss these, uh, these plugs at the back because they will touch here. If you're not careful, I mean, this is obviously further back, but those things protrude out the back there. You've got to make sure they don't touch. I'm planning on putting some sort of protection there as well. And when these boards arrive, I'll do the final build in the final enclosure, which was the whole point of this exercise and put it up there and I'll be able to then share the boards with you. So all that's left for me to do now is to thank you for your company and uh, very importantly because of the time of the year we're in I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas if you celebrate Christmas if you don't very festive holiday and especially I want to wish you all a fantastic 2023. I hope the next year brings you all the things you desire none of the things you fear. I hope you stay safe and healthy and um, I hope you continue to support the channel as you have done during this year. And I want to thank you all for your support, for your comments, for your direct support on Patreon, on uh, through PayPal, with the comments. It's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And I just cannot express how much I appreciate your support and especially the community feeling that um, that I'm getting from this, this channel and everybody who participates in it. And I certainly uh, hope that the following year lets us grow further and stronger as a, as a community and more people get into this hobby because it, it really does get boring watching myself. So um, welcome aboard. And again, thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.